There's always a 5% chance of the world ending, ladies and gentlemen. There's always a five or higher. There's too many thermonuclear <laughs> weapons everywhere, man. Ty, what are you doing right now? I am digging a corner post. I'm gonna use temporary fence, but I just plowed and planted oats in here. Oats, not necessarily, we use them for oatmeal, but it's a big field. I have 10 acres of oats. That's enough for a lot of oatmeal for life, but I feed the oats to the horses. I have big draft horses. Some of my farms, I don't use tractors. I use old school Amish horse drawn plows. And you'd be surprised how much you can do in the old ways, man. So usually if I'm digging a lot of fence, I have a bobcat on this farm. This, I have one farm that's run by the Amish. This one is, we use tractors. We'll use a bobcat to pound in, but I don't have the, I have the post pounder at the other farm right now. So I'm just digging. Like Joel Salatz had taught me when I was 19, post hole digger, you wanna get strong strong arms strong hands do something that has a lot of straining man you want calluses i was out with a dude and uh a friend of mine we we're at a club there's all these beautiful women we we're in sweden and uh i don't know why he shook the girl's hand she's like oh you have such soft hands and she didn't mean it in a good way he was very butthurt about that i said bro you wear gloves in the gym and you don't do any outdoor work like you talk about an ick there's an ick built into women, for the most part, with overly weak men. Now, there are, of course, there's women who like weak men, but if you're looking at a broad 10,000 men, 10,000 women, hyper-feminized or weak, not feminine's the wrong word, because there are women who like feminine faces, like supermodel men, but overly weak is definitely an unconscious mind ick for most women. <laughs> Interestingly enough, it's like in the modern world that's so detached from manual labor, you see guys going viral who just chop wood, split wood on their Instagram. And it's all female comments. Women are dying for kind of that built-in DNA, a man's man. Again, there are women who are attracted to feminine faces, but weak is a turn off. I remember when I was at Joel Salatz, he had an old coffee book from like the 1800s, like a coffee table book, and I opened it up and it showed a woman splitting wood. And it was like advice to, to teenagers on the farm. And it said, leave romance for the poets. Marry a strong woman. And I thought that was interesting. In the 1800s, they were saying, get a strong woman that can chop wood. Imagine what that book would say about society now. If you hand a post hole digger to 90% of men, they are not going to know what this is. I mean, I didn't. I grew up in a city in L.A., but luckily as a teenager, I got to be around some old school, <laughs> old school people like Joel Salatin and the Amish. So, great forearm, forearm workout, delts, shoulders, going a little slower than I normally would because I'm talking, but yeah. I'm gonna put this end post in, then we can pull it tight. When you're building an electric fence, you need to have one stable post. And then I'm gonna, the horses will be able to, I built this pond, be able to drink some really good water. Right now, I mean, we feed them out of a trough too, clean water, but they always like to drink out of living water. That's a spring fed, continual pure water pours into that pond. So, yeah. Biodiversity, that's what Joel taught me. People think just having trees, there you go. <laughs> People think having a tree all over the world and just forests is the healthiest and best for carbon sequestration and climate change. Actually, grassland is super good if it's managed. More fertile land comes from grasslands than trees. The Pampas of Argentina, Ukrainian, the Plains, Saskatchewan, Illinois, most fertile places in the world didn't develop under trees. Some did, like in France and Scandinavia, but the most fertile was under grass, well-managed grass. So we put an electric fence to manage so that the cows and the horses don't stay too long on one place, rotational grazing, and we manage the edge effect. So we divide up the open land, grass, 
cropland here. This is oats I planted. And then we keep some edge effect. Those are autumn olives, blackberries. I built an island there on the, so that birds, there's already a Canadian goose that can get away. We planted a little willow tree. I'm gonna build a series of ponds all the way into a lake I have over here. Then I've got woods there. I'm gonna reforest the steepest parts here. So actually, countryside is like, a, I'm a chess player. People think, oh, isn't it boring? I'm like, no, man. The highest IQ activity you can do is work with mother nature. Mother nature is smart and complicated. Smart and complicated. You gotta know when to plant oats. Oats versus wheat. We plant oats in the spring. There's an old saying, plant oats into the mud and wheat into the dirt, uh, the dust. So I'll plant this into the dust in August. We'll take the oats off in let's say August. We'll leave it fallow for a month and a half for weed control because this is organic farm. We don't use any pesticides or Roundup. So then we'll, then we'll put wheat with alfalfa underneath. So the wheat acts as a nurse crop. And next summer, the alfalfa will spring through. I got 30, 40 acres of alfalfa, the queen of all forages. Funny, I did a talk on Twitter. I tried Twitter Live, which is now pretty cool. Elon changed algo. It used to like shadow ban me. I get like 40 people on my Twitter Lives, even though I have like 600,000. And now I just went live, what was that, two days ago, Jeremy? I had 4,000 continuously watching. It was pretty cool. And uh, one of the things I asked, I did a trivia, $500 giveaway. I ended up giving 1,000, but I said, what's the queen of all forages? And even ChatGPT doesn't know, which is pretty mind blowing that AI is that stupid. The king of all forages generally is considered corn. It's the highest yield tonnage per acre or hectare of any crop in most of the world. Can't grow corn everywhere. I was in Iceland, it's hard for them to grow corn. They don't have enough BTUs. But BTUs, British thermal units, you need a lot of heat. That's what's special about the United States is that you have super fertile soils like in Illinois, most fertile in the world really, but you have super hot summers. So you can grow the king of all forages by tonnage is corn. Sugar cane is, but it's not, sugar cane's not as useful as, as corn. Corn's super high starch, you know, you can feed your chickens, your pigs, humans. But the queen of all forages, I asked, and Louis Bromfield, the famous founder of kind of organic agriculture, he said, the queen's alfalfa because it's got a 15 inch, 15 foot tap root sometimes and it pulls up minerals. So I'll, this will eventually go back into alfalfa. This is mostly a fescue field. You can see this is orchard grass here, the lighter colored. This is fescue, which has a, has a fungus on it. It's called endophyte infected fungus. The fungus is good, keeps the grass strong. This is Kentucky. It's from a, a hybrid from Kentucky that spread all over America accidentally. And, but it's bad for animal reproduction. So your horses will have an automatic abortion or, or a miscarriage. They'll abort the fetus, the little colt. So I try to retro, I try to regenerate the fields into better. So this one is a rock. First you put, I follow the 1500s crop rotation with some modifications. The Argen, I, I have a hybrid Argentinian crop rotation mixed with the old Amish. European, Switzerland. So it's corn, it's a seven year rotation. Corn first, you plow the sod, you put corn in. Some people think plowing's bad. It's not bad if you do it once every seven years, it's actually good. And if you don't believe me, go to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where the Amish still plow, which is one of the most productive spots on earth. And they're still doing old school plowing, but they don't do it, you can't do it every year. Then you have too much tillage. So we do corn first. Let the corn in the sp next spring, you put in oats, take the oats off, put the wheat, put the alfalfa underneath as a nurse crop. So the little alfalfa sits underneath the, the wheat. The wheat provides like a mama. It protects it from the wind and from weeds. And then when you take the wheat off, because wheat's an annual, it dies. And then we, we harvest it. I use horses. We use a sickle. We, sometimes we'll use a, a, a reaper, like an old school, it's a binder they're called and we use a thrashing machine, that's old fashioned. On the, we'll use a combine on my other farms. Take the weed off, and then underneath you'll have alfalfa. Sometimes we put Timothy and red clover, and, and then we'll graze it for five years to give it a rest and regenerate. Then it'll switch, the alfalfa will slowly die out, 
because it creates nitrogen for grass. So grass thickens and kills off the alfalfa. And then five years in, you've built back soil fertility and you put it back in the corn. If you do that over and over, you increase the depth of the soil. People, yeah. Unfortunately, what I'm talking about is kind of a lost. I, I feel fortunate that I, I'm like that generation, like Joel Salatin, they're all dying off. I was lucky enough as a teenager, instead of going to college, I went and lived with him for years. And then I lived with the Amish for two and a half years. And then I went, traveled the world, worked on some of the top farms in the world, visited Lock and Bar Farms in New Zealand and worked on dairies in Christchurch in Ireland. And I never thought I'd use that stuff because now I do all this internet stuff and e-com. But lo and behold, after COVID, I bought farms before that, knowing that it was important to have a backup plan. And then, damn, quarantine came. And my mom's like, how'd you predict this? And I said, I don't know. There's always a 5% chance of the world ending, ladies and gentlemen. There's always a five or higher. There's too many thermonuclear weapons everywhere, man. So, 